what is going on? Ayo, no. <laughs> Don't never really know how to start these things. But um, thank you for tuning in, thank you for joining me. My name is Ralph, I am a wedding photographer here in Fort Lauderdale. Today we'll be talking about what's in my camera bag for 2020. I am still rocking uh, two ERSRs. One's in my hand and then the other one I'm currently filming with. On it is the 51.2 and couple of other lenses that I'll get to in a minute. And prior to that, I was shooting with the 5D Mark IV from Canon. Um, really love that camera. But I wanted to move to mirrorless because I was looking for a lighter solution. I do carry two bodies with me on any given wedding, at any given wedding or shoot. So I wanted to carry something lighter, though it didn't turn out that way, only because the RF lenses are ginormous, most of them anyway except for the new 70 to 200, which uh, happens to be smaller than the EF 70 to 200 at the same time. I don't really, it's not a lens that I use a lot. There are other benefits that I found moving to mirrorless because obviously all my EF lenses are sharp. There's no need for micro focusing. Now I wanna address the elephant in the room only because the US R only comes with one card slot. And I know most of you, wait, he's a wedding photographer? He's shooting with the EOS R? What, what, what? It's okay, it's okay. I did devise a backup solution um, and it has been working out for me. I, I don't know if that's for everyone. I don't know if that's for, uh, if it's a solution that most people shooting with the EOS R would adopt. But you know, there's a few things I love about my backup solution. The way I shoot anyway is I change cards basically pretty much after every section. So after the getting ready, I pop in two, you know, two new batteries and I pop in two new cards, one on each camera, of course, for whatever's coming next. After the ceremony, same thing. I don't never shoot an entire wedding on one card. Why? Because God forbid something happens um, to a card, you know, I, I have some pictures. I may not have everything for the day, but I have some pictures so far in my six year career, nothing like that has happened. At the same time, I do take precautions, you know? I do have, um, I don't know, I'll pull it out. So this is currently my backup solution. This is a RAF Power a file hub and I've attached an SSD to it. What this allows me to do is with one button, I pop in the SD card, I press one button and it copies whatever that's on the SD card to the SSD that I have attached to it. And that seems to be, you know, that seems to be working out for me. So after every section, I take a card, put it in, oh, notification, sorry. I take the card, put it in, and boom, you know, back up uh, while I'm shooting on the other card. So that's how I got over the two card slot. However, I am looking to upgrade these bodies possibly to the R6 whenever they're available. I'm not sure how am I gonna like it because I do love the 30 megapixel resolution of the US R's. The R6 is 20 megapixel. I, I'm not sure. I do a lot of cropping and recomposing and posts. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, they're serving me well. Um, you know, I have no complaints with them. Uh, the menu system is the same as all the other Canon. So that's another plus. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the US R for you guys. Um, as far as the lenses that I'm, uh, that I have and I currently use, my two favorite lenses are the 35 and the 85. So I usually start the day out with the 35 and the 85. Uh, from that point, I would put on the 50 if I'm shoot when I shoot the details. Uh, the 50 I'm currently recording with, uh, the 35 is here, <laughs> nicely labeled. I use a 24 sometimes when they're getting ready to, it depends on the setup, depends on the room that I'm working with. The 50 plus the 100 macro. Uh, obviously you need a macro lens for those detailed, really, really detailed ring shots and things like that. So I use, you know, macro lens. Sometimes I can get away with the 35 shooting macro shots. It's, I can't, it's not macro, let's put it this way. Basically, you crop in just to 
give it the appearance of it looking closer, but it's not a macro shot. But sometimes you get away with it. I use prime lenses because of their aperture settings. I can go down to f1.2 at some of my lenses and f1.4 at most of my lenses, with the exception of the 16 to 28 from Tokina um, that I use for my reception uh, when I'm not using the 24 uh, 1.4. So. Uh, and of course the 70 to 200, which I, I believe every wedding photographer should have, every wedding actually and portrait photographer should have because it's an amazing portrait lens. I don't use that lens very often. That's because if I can get away with it, I would probably, I would prefer to use the 85. So sometimes you can't get, uh, you can't get away from using the 70 to 200 uh, because obviously if you're shooting in a ceremony, at a church and you know every church has their regulations and rules and you know you can't that extra reach is always welcome um but if i can get away with it by using say the 180 uh the 135 or even the 85 that's primarily what i would what i would put on the camera so at the same time i still think the 70 to 200 belongs on every, in, in every photographer's kit, in every wedding photographer, portrait photographer, uh, fashion photographer, whatever it is that you're shooting, you need a 70 to 200, um, if not for anything else for that compression. Uh, yeah, so there's a, there are a couple of lenses that I'm looking to acquire by the end of this year, God willing. Uh, the 105 1.4 from Sigma, or the 200 F2 from Canon, uh, those are monster lenses, but something about the bokeh and compression that I love. Um, and you could, you could see it, you know, throughout my style too, that I shoot mostly wide open, unless I need to not shoot wide open. So this is a basic overview of what I have in my uh, camera bag. We call it camera bag, but I don't carry a bag. I have a big old Pelican case that I, you know, lug around with me at weddings. <laughs> Oh man, I really love the protection that the Pelican case offers, so that's that. But it's not a bag, I have too much equipment for that. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, as far as flashes, I'm currently on the Orlet system. It is a shame. Adorama no longer sells the Orlet flash. It's the RT600C. It's, again, it's a shame that Adorama no longer offers that flash for sale, but I find it to be tremendous. It's one of the best flashes I've ever used, including Canon's own EXRT, EX600RT, if I'm not mistaken. I, again, like, I love everything about this flash. I love the color uh, of the flash, the output, and how consistent it always is, in my opinion. And it's, directly compatible with Canon's own uh, RT system. I'm currently involved in the OLED ecosystem. I have the RT400 and RT601, and I have one trigger to rule them all. So that's that's amazing. I can set up my speed lights and my strobes with one trigger, uh, and I could use my speed lights as masters to my strobes. And so it's, it's, it's really cool. I know a lot of people rave about the uh, R2 system from Adorama as well, but I could always get a Canon flash and know that the rest of my system the rest of my flash system is gonna be, you know, it's gonna work just fine. So that's really beneficial to have. So that's what's in my camera bag uh, for 2020. 2021, things might change, um, only because like I mentioned earlier, I am looking to acquire a few more lenses, uh, primarily the Sigma 105 f1.4. I don't, I don't like Sigma and I, I remember when everybody used to get the Sigma 35 and they were raving about that lens. And I knew like, okay, it's just a phase because the issues that I've had with Sigmas is, is they don't, they will start out great, but they don't stay great. You know, my 35, I've had the 35 uh, F1.4 from Canon version two for a long time. And we're talking about over three years now. And it's as great as the first time I put it on. Uh, obviously, you send, you know, I do send it to get, you know, calibrated and things like that through CPS. But my point is I know what I'm getting when I put the camera on the lens. It's not always the same with Sigma. Over time, they degrade. So 
I am on a fence about getting the 105. Reliability reviews that I've read about it seems to be uh, great, so I wanna try. Otherwise, it would be the Canon 200 F2, which is a beast of a lens. Expensive, but amazing. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm moving to RF, um, because they are pricey. They're, and they're not smaller than the EF lenses I'm currently using. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work out. I might, but we'll see. And for sure, I'm, I am looking to replace my two EOS Rs with possibly EOS R6 or R5 and an R6. We'll see how that, you know, turns out. Because, uh, you know, one of the reasons is so, something I wanna address real quick is because it's interesting. Um, when you upgrade your cameras, you don't just upgrade the cameras. There are other things that comes with it as well. Uh, if I purchase the R5, I have to basically ex extend my backup system. Um, and that's a whole dedicated video up all, all unto itself. But you know, the, the bigger files means you need more storage. More storage means you need a higher price. Also, I am not looking forward to buying CF Express cards as it stands right now uh, because they are very expensive for the amount of space that you're getting. And I don't think they make less than a 64 gig cards and we're still looking at, uh, we're, you know, we're still looking at $200 for a 64 gigabyte card. And so there, there, there's different, there's, things to think about when you switch uh when you change cameras uh, this is why the r6 is so appealing to me because i can continue with my sds because i have a plethora of sd cards basically nothing changed if anything it might even be better uh, because it's a 20 megapixel sensor versus 30 so my files will be less but we'll see how that goes we'll have to wait till this COVID thing to go over hopefully and yeah and have a successful 2020 one wedding season if you like this uh subscribe uh, give me a like thank you for sticking around uh and i'll see you on the next video